A student wishing to determine experimentally the acceleration g due to gravity has an apparatus that holds a small steel sphere above a recording plate as shown above. When the sphere is released, a timer automatically begins recording the time of fall. The timer automatically stops when the sphere strikes the recording plate. The student measures the time of fall for different values of distance d shown above and records the data in the table below. These data points are also plotted on the graph. Part A. On the grid above, sketch the smooth curve that best, dis best represents the student's data. All right, so making the most smooth curve I can, let's start trying to connect each of those dots. It looks something like that. Uh, the student can use these data for distance d and time t to produce a second graph from which the acceleration g due to gravity can be determined. If only the variables d and t are used, what quantities should the student graph in order to produce a linear relationship between these two quantities? So anytime you're asked about a linear relationship, we're going to want to find an equation that matches y equals mx plus b. In this case, our equation for distance we know is related to time by the vertical displacement equation d equals one half gt squared. So lining this up the best we can with the y equals mx plus b equation, we don't have a starting point d naught or x naught, so we don't have to worry about the plus b term. And if our x values are plotted as t squared and our y values are plotted as d, we can get a linear relationship between d and t squared. That would also leave our slope to equal one half g. So to answer the question, we'll say that the y axis should plot d and the x axis should plot t squared. On the grid below, plot the data points for the quantities you have identified in part b and sketch the best straight lined fit to the points. Label your axes and show the scale you have chosen for the graph. So down below, we can label the vertical direction as distance in meters. And on the x-axis, we're going to plot time squared, which has units of seconds squared. So in order to figure out the scale of our graph, let's go up to the top table and add a column or a row where we have t squared. So I've added this row t squared for each of the data points and those are going to be the values that I plot along the x-axis. So looking at the range of data in our vertical direction we go from 0.1 meters to 2 meters and we have five segments in the vertical direction on our graph so let's just label those 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2 like that. Along the x direction, our time squared values range from 0 0.0196 all the way up to nearly 0.4. And we have 14 grid spaces along the horizontal direction. So one thing you can do is take 0.4, because we want at least our data 0.39 to fit on our data table. We can round that up to 0.4 and divide it by 14. If we round it up to 0.42, that evenly divides by 14, and 0 0.4 divided by 14 is equal to 0 0.03. So if we make each of our segments across the bottom 0 0.03, we will have enough room to fit all of our data points in a nice and spread out manner. So starting at 0 0.03, we go all the way up to 0 0.42, which is enough room to fit all of the data. And plotting the data, we have at point 0.1, that goes with point 0.0196. So point 0.0196, that will be about here. And then that's at point 0.1. So let's go right about there. And then we have the next data point is 0 
and we're at 0 0.5. So 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, 0 0.1 will be right about here and 0 0.5 is right there. Our next data point is 0 0.21 at 1. So 0 0.21 at 1 would be right about there. 0 0.35 at 1.7. So 0.35 at 1.7 will go somewhere right there. And the last data point is 0.4 if we round and 2. So at 0.4 we're at 2. And I think I made that last one a little high. 1.7. Yeah. Let's move it down just a little bit. So it lines up with 1.7. Okay. And then we're going to sketch a line of best fit. So starting at the first data point, going to my last data point, I'm going to connect the dots. Alright, so that should be it for part C. D. Using the slope of your graph in part C, calculate the acceleration g due to gravity in this experiment. So we're going to use our equation that we came up with in part B. So we're using distance equals one half gt squared and our slope is m. That's going to be equal to the one half times g. So what we also want to do is calculate the slope based on the data we just plotted. And to calculate that slope, we're going to do rise over run. And the rise is going to be d2 minus d1, and the run is going to be t squared 2 minus t squared of 1. So plugging in our values, we get a slope of 5.4. And the units for the slope are going to have units of the rise over the run. So that would be meters per second squared. But we're not done yet. That's not our acceleration because our slope is equal to 1 half g. Rearranging for g, we just need to multiply both sides by 2. And so we get that g is going to be twice our slope. So if we multiply our, our 5.4 by 2, we get that acceleration is roughly equal to 10.8 meters per second squared. And of course, that's going to be negative. So for part E, it says state one way in which the student could improve the accuracy of the results if the experiment were to be performed again. Explain why this would improve the accuracy. So what they're looking for here is for something along these lines. Take more data for more accurate results. And then the reason why you would want to take more data is because that would allow you to average the trials which in turn will reduce the amount of error that your final answer has.